who is ready for another sew along. Today is going to be episode one. The information in this video, if you've followed my sew alongs in the past, um, this is usually what I call episode zero, but because this top is a little bit more basic and simple, there aren't a ton of instructions, we're able to fit episode zero into the entire sew along as well. So first things first, you need to download, if you haven't already, the free sew along workbook. The uh, link to this is in the description box. If you do not have it already, go ahead and download it. Like I said, it is totally free. Um, okay, so let's get into it. Uh, the pattern, like I said, is McCall's 8255. Um, some things that you need to know when you go shopping for fabric. I will show you. And I, when I got to the store and I started looking through the pattern and I realized that the top is fully lined except for the sleeves. So the whole bodice is fully lined. I kind of switched gears a little bit and decided to go for a super lightweight fabric that might even be a little bit on the sheer side. This is a cotton dobby that has a Swiss dot to it. So you can see that it's a little bit sheer, but it is very, very lightweight because when we double this up, I don't want it to be a super thick or hot or heavyweight garment at the end. This is after all a summer top. So I ended up getting this, it's actually technically muslin but it's 100% cotton, so it matches the exterior, and it's also really thin and lightweight. That said, though, if you are going to make views A or D that do not have, sorry about the lighting, that do not have this little tulip hem, you don't need a lining. You don't. I will show you through the instruction how you are able to take the pattern pieces that they've already given us and make a facing and then just do your simple hem. You will have exposed zipper tape on the inside of your garment, but I think that that far outweighs the, the idea that you have to have a lining for this garment. Now, if you are making the tulip hem, a lining is simpler simply because the hem is a little bit difficult to hem without a facing and or lining. So might as well go ahead and make a lining for it. Same thing with the collar. It's just easier if you have that tulip hem to just do a lining. So if you're gonna do that straight across version, you can do heavier weight wovens. Um, you can do a linen, for example, and you wouldn't feel too like thick and hot and all of that. Take you guys over to the cutting table where we are going to look at my fast fit worksheet. And I'm gonna show you the process that I go through in order to pick my pattern size. So let's head over there and pick a size. All right, you guys. So working through my fast fit worksheet here and I've got my measurements. One thing I wanna point out is because this is a top that does not extend all the way down to your low hip, you do not need to worry about your hip measurement here. I am gonna take my high hip measurement though, just so I can check that against the bottom hem measurement and make sure that it is going to fit my lovely pear shape. Um, body chart size, we move right along to this section here and I'm comparing against mine. So for a size 40 bust, that's an 18 and that equals 40 inches. And then the waist come to a 36, which I'm in between a 20 and a 22. That means we're always gonna size down. Um, so that's size 20, 35 inches. And then we're not doing the hip, we're not doing waist length. We are moving down to finished garment measurements and all they give us is the finished bust. So we have here our finished bust measurements. So finished for a size 18 is 44 inches. And that's an 18. And then finished for a size 20 at the waist is 35 and a half inches. Perfect. And then again, we don't have the hip, but as you can tell, like it's just a few inches lower than your waistline. So C is a little bit longer, but it's still not that nine inches. That's like the industry standard for the difference between your waist and your hip. It's more like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half minus your um, seam allowance. So it's not all the way to your low hip. Um, so if you're a pair and you know, you, your hips curve out a bunch, 
this might not be enough curve for you, this slight curve that they have here. But because I'm making B, which is only one, two, three, four inches less our seam allowance for the hem, you know, there's probably not that much curve between my waist and four and a half inches down. Because we have so many seams, so if you look at view B, we have our side seams, obviously. We have these front princess seams. And then also in the back, we have princess seams again. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six seams, each one of them at five eighths inch of a seam allowance. That is three and a half, four and three quarters of an inch to play around with at that hem. So I'm gonna leave it just like this and not even factor in my hip measurement at all here because I know that I can borrow from the seam allowances in order to fit the hip better because we have so many seams. All right, so our pattern ease is going to be the difference between number three and number two. So pattern ease at the bust is four inches. Pattern ease at the waist is half an inch. Close fitting waist. Maybe measure after you have a sandwich. <laughs> But the intended fit of this is going to be number one plus number four. So should be 44 inches at the bust and the waist should be 36 and a half. So the size to cut three should equal five. And on this size, it does. So an 18 at the bust and then 35 and a half versus 36 and a half. So I need to add an inch at the waist. I can still make size 20, not 18 inches. I can still make size 20. And then again, just borrow from a few of those um, seam allowances. So add the waist, one inch divided by six, whatever that is, is what I would need to add to each uh, seam allowance. But I think that because I want it to be a little bit more than half an inch of room in my waist, I might just do a quarter inch at all side seams. And that would be in a quarter inch times six is one and a half inches extra. So then I'll have two inches at my waist equals two inches of ease. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. And then this will carry down into the hip as well. So that when I go to make these pattern adjustments, we're going to take my waistline, we're going to go to a size 1820. We're going to add that quarter of an inch. So we're going to grade out from an 18 out 18 at the bust way up here out to what I guess technically is gonna be a 24. Yeah, so I can go bust, and then somewhere through here, make it a 20, and then somewhere through here, make it that 24. And keep that all the way down through the hem. So coming all the way down through here. So it'll look something like this. All right, so that's what I am going to cut. And I know I'll have a little bit of extra wiggle room in the waist and hopefully a little bit of extra wiggle room in the hip as well. And if it's too much, I can always take it out, right? Always better to have too much than not enough. But I'm gonna be an 18 literally everywhere else, okay? So now that we are done with that, figuring out which size to cut, coming to the workbook here, um, we're gonna choose a size. So now I'm gonna go through and make all of these alterations. We did not do the bicep in the fast fit worksheet, but you totally can just add another line. Um, for an 18, it's 17 inches. My bicep is 14. So I know that that's plenty. Um, but if you want to check yours, go ahead. I don't think many of us will have much of an issue because um, the sleeves are gathered. You can see there's a big puff sleeve on B. I'm actually using the sleeve of A, which has some gathers. Um, and D is pretty roomy as well. So um, just double check that against your own, but I'm making an 18 so that it fits into the upper part of my bodice. And I know that 17 inches is gonna be plenty. So 
So I am going to throw these up on my dress form, which means that you would need to pin them together as if you had sewn them. Let me get this all pinned and up on the dress form and I'll show you any adjustments that I have to make lengthwise. Okay, can you kind of see what we've got here? We've got our front with our front princess seam, our side seam, and then our side back, which is the back princess seam. I've also got my shoulder pinned and then we're gonna pin this along the center back and center front on my dress form. Okay, so I've got it on here, um, tentatively pinned in where it's supposed to go and I'm noticing a few things. One is the shoulder seam. <laughs> Can you guys see this little seam here? That's my shoulder and the shoulder of the pattern is way forward. So pretty concerning with that. Same thing with the side. Now granted, I didn't measure in order to pin this together. So the side seam is down here at the hip. This is the side seam of my, this is the side of my body here. And then you can see where the side seam of the garment is falling. So a few little concerning things there that I don't normally see very often. So I'm gonna be double checking that for sure. And then something that almost always happens for me is I'm short-waisted, all my length is in my rise. So from my low hip to my waist. So from here, you can see my bust line is here and my uh, waistline is here. There's only a few inches. So I normally always have to shorten the length of bodices. So the waistline is here and my waistline is here. So I have to shorten by, I don't know, what is that, four inches or something? So I'll measure that, shorten that amount, and then that will bring this entire hem up like a lot. Okay, so you can get a feel for it there. Again, I'm not being super precious about it right now, um, but if I do that, then you can see where this is actually going to hit um, just a lot higher on the body, um, a lot higher on those hips. Now, if I decide that, you know what, like this is my belly button, I can see my belly button, and the hem of this is gonna hit right at my belly button, I, that doesn't have to be my waistline. I can move it down some. Maybe I want it to hit an inch below my belly button, for example. So instead of taking out all four of those inches, I'll just take out three um, and can kind of adjust the length that way. But I do wanna honor kind of the cropped nature of it, but maybe my belly button showing is a little bit too short. You know what I'm saying? Um, other than that, everything looks pretty good. We've got a ton of room in the arm side, which is great for when you have a sleeve. If I were making the sleeveless version, I might remove some of this, you know, pinching out the little, the little slices in the back. Um, but all of that looks pretty good. The depth of the arm side looks really good. So if you can see here, it's not gonna show my bra. It's not gonna like cut me off. Once you take out the seam allowances for the sleeve, I think that will look really good. And then just shorting the back to match the front. All right, so all I'm doing here is I marked that seam on my dress form on the pattern piece on back, and I drew in the seam allowance. I'm folding this up and putting the seam allowance right on that line that I drew in, like so, and this is where my tape will go. So now I've just removed that and also adjusted for that angle there. I just need to find some tape. So now the back is adjusted for that length. It will not wrap around to the front anymore. And now I need to add to the front so that the front will wrap around to the back. So you can see the amount that I took out here is the amount that I need to add to the front. So I'll just measure. That is roughly, we'll call it three eighths on one end. And the other end is just about a half. So I'm gonna cut through my seam allowance here, take a piece of the leftover like trash tissue and put in, and then I'm not gonna show you guys, but obviously you would, you know, pin this back together, put it back on your dress form and make sure that these two things go together like they are supposed to. And draw in the, the little notch again. So that's that. Uh, the other thing that I checked for was the sort of side seam issue that I was having. And I think, 
what happened was, and I, I should have thought of this earlier, but you know, a lot going on in the mind. My back is very narrow as compared to my front. I carry a lot of belly weight. Remember the bloat that I mentioned earlier? Um, so my back is actually a smaller size at the waist and high hip-ish area than my front. So adding all of that quarter inch at all of those side seams is too much for my back. So I think what I'm gonna do is just chop it off and make an 18 all the way down no I'm gonna <laughs> that's too aggressive um for now I'm gonna slim it down to the size 20 on both back pieces and just come up to where this meets like that so now I've removed about a quarter of an inch times one two three four once I do the other ones as well and then that'll give me just a little bit less ease through the back. Okay, so that's side back, back, that's the same, that's the same. Okay, so there, removed all of that. And then lengthwise, you can see, where did I put it? Oh, here it is. My back is also longer than my front I don't know how that ends up happening but my waistline for the back is only one and a quarter inches away from the waistline I'm sorry it's two and a quarter inches away from the waistline so I'm, I know it says lengthen or shorten here it's essentially what we're doing we're pinching at the waistline moving it up to that line that matches the ribbon on my dress form so that's gonna be my new back. Okay, so that's my new back piece, my new back piece. Now the, oh wait, I need to shorten this as well. So we ended up shortening it by, yep, so that's two and something, <laughs> two and a quarter. All right, so now whenever I take this up, they will match. So now those have been taken up an equal amount. Now we will come to the front and see what the damage is here. Um, the line is, is this it? That might be it. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Here's the line here. So remember though, I didn't really want to take all of this. I want my hem to be one inch longer. So I'm going to line up the center front. And instead of this being my waistline, I'm now gonna make this my waistline so that it is that one inch longer. And then you can see one, two and a quarter inches, roughly pinch and move the waistline up to here. Okay, so again, this was one and a half inches. So about three inches got taken out. And then we will double check the side seams because we do want the side seams to match, right? Um, but other than that, we should be good to go here. All right, and then true up all your seams again and just make sure there's like a nice little flow between them. So like I said, we need to true up the lines here, make sure those are nice and smooth. Same thing, this will actually get all chopped off through here. Um, this needs to be trued and then we will check the side seams of the back and front. So we've got the side front, side back. This part with the notch should all be the same through here. We just need to double check through here and as you can see, the back is still a little bit longer than my front. So I'll just naturally grade that down just a little bit um, in order to get those two things to match. So with all of that, the alterations are done. We're not doing anything to my sleeve. Um, we do have these pattern pieces, which are not gonna be adjusted. That's not true. They are because we adjusted the shoulder. So the same adjustment that we made to the shoulder, that three eighths to a half inch that got taken out of the back and added to the front, we will need to mimic that on the shoulder seams here and here yeah and that'll be it and then i'm going to cut out my lining first 
And that's what I'm gonna sew tomorrow um, so that if I have to make any of these small adjustments, I can make them to the lining and you won't see them in my actual fashion fabric. So as I'm cutting up this last one, a few tips here about cutting um, is when you are done cutting out all of your pattern pieces, fold the pattern pieces up with the fabric that you just cut out. Like I'm gonna fold this whole thing as one. You might've noticed me, noticed me doing it um, a little bit before too. Other than that, that's really all I can think of for the cutting process, I mean, obviously, you know, line up your grain lines with the selvage of the fabric, all the usual stuff. Oh, clip the center front of your front piece. That'll help you as we line the lining up with the uh, main fabric, like the, help you line up the center fronts. If you go ahead and uh, put a little notch in there now, that will help you when we get to that point. And if you guys have any questions at all about any of this that I have done today, if you want me to take a look at your fast fit worksheet, if you want me to um, look at your dress form, any of that kind of stuff, uh, become a hem cider ASAP. We are doing a live Zoom tonight, 5 p.m. Eastern, where we're going to answer any questions that you guys have about what we covered today. And then we'll do that same thing every night this week um, addressing each day's work. Okay, so we are all prepped and ready to go, ready to turn on our sewing machines tomorrow and get to sewing. Um, like I said before, this is pretty simple and straightforward pattern. So day two is really gonna consist of just constructing the bodices. We should be able to knock this out in 30, 45 minutes each day. So it's not one of those sew alongs where every day takes a couple of hours. You should be able to stay on track, sew with me throughout the week, and then we can all um, reveal our tops at the end of the week. So like I said, tomorrow, day two, we're constructing the bodices. Meet me back here and we'll start sewing tomorrow. I'll see you then.